Namaste. I am with Dr. Das again for a very important episode starting with Atma. Pranam to you. Namaste Rajivji. So, the Atma being the most foundational principle deserves a nice solid episode. Yes. So, tell us about the Atma. Yes, Atma is uh, the foundation of spirituality. Sometimes people translate Atma as soul, sometimes spirit. So, spirituality comes from that. In Sanskrit, we call it Adhyatmavad. Means the field, philosophy, practice, theory which relates with Atma. The word Atma comes from Sanskrit root At, which means At Satatya Gamne, means that which goes everywhere. In Bhagavad Gita, also Krishna says, uses one word Sarvagataha that Atma goes everywhere, which means that it goes into various species of life, from small to the biggest one, from Brahma up to the lowest amoeba even. And in that, case, in that way, it's different from soul, because plants don't have soul in the Christian system. Right. Even uh, animals, they don't feel, uh, they're sure they have soul. Yeah, of course, they, they said that even women don't have soul. Now, there was a debate on that. Right, now they have accommodated women <laughs> at least. <laughs> well, during the slavery, the Vatican was asked, how can you enslave black people yeah. if they have soul? So there was a big debate, do they have soul, not soul, what to do? And, you know, it had to be negotiated. Yeah. But we've never had a doubt no, that we, every we living know. creature... Right down to the tiniest one yes. has soul, yeah, has, wherever, has Atma. Wherever you see the symptoms of life, there is a soul. Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit. They all have Atma. Sthavar Jangamam. Not only movable, but even immovable. You know that in India we consider we, even the plants, which are immovable, mountains, they also have life in them. You know the whole story about Himalaya, the daughter of Himalaya is Parvati. Ganga? Yeah. Ganga? Yes. So, these, these also have life in them and yavat sanjayate kinchit sattvam sthavar jangamam. Anything movable, immovable, whatever you see, there is life in it. Kshetra Kshetra Gishan Yoga Tad Vidhi Bharatarashuga. Krishna says this very clearly that it is a combination of Kshetra and Kshetra Gya. Kshetra Gya is another term used for the Atma. And kshetra is the body field, literally. So, Atma is an immortal, first of all it is immortal, it is without any birth or death. That is another significant distinction because if you read Bible then for them the soul is not immortal. Well, it may live in heaven immortally, but well, souls... Well, in some places there you actually use the word uh, that uh, it's uh, mortal. They even use the word dead soul. Dead soul, yeah. yeah. But in any case, it's not beginningless, like in our case. Right. So, it is beginningless and it is endless. Right. So, na jayate miriyate vakadachan. It is never born, it never dies. Right. It is the principle of life. It is the source of consciousness. And that consciousness is inherent characteristic of Atma. So, the, the word consciousness in Sanskrit would be Chetna? Yes, Chetna. So, Atma includes Chetra as a property of it. Sir. Yeah, it's its property, just like fire has heat. So, heat is the inherent characteristic of fire. Right. Or sun has light. Right. So, like that, consciousness is the inherent property of it. It's the Dharma. Right. Without this Dharma, there is no question of Atma. So, the Atma's, one of its inherent qualities is the Chetna, which we sometimes loosely translate as consciousness. Right. So, Atma is always conscious. Always conscious and it can never lose it. And it is because of that that there is consciousness in the body or in the senses or in the mind and all other apparatus. So, when a person is in deep sleep, he is not feeling that he is conscious but his Atma is still there. Right. So, just somebody goes into coma, so the person is not aware even of his own bodily limbs or somebody is in deep sleep, especially if you are in the sleep, in dreamless state, then you are not aware of your physical body, your limbs. But that does not mean that Atma has lost, lost its consciousness. Atma has just contracted its consciousness. So, just as sometimes doctors operate in some particular limb of your body and they give anesthesia. So, they make that part unconscious. Because 
consciousness is not the characteristic of that particular limb. Right. It's something which is infused from outside, from Atma into that. And because it is incidental characteristic, it can be taken away. So as we go into future episodes, we start talking about uh, other layers of being mm -hmm. which are conditioned. Right. So I guess at that time it will become clearer that if Rajiv is unconscious, then it's not that the Atman is unconscious, it's my body, mind complex which is unconscious. Right. I mean, we all the time we are moving in three states of awareness. We have the waking state in which we are aware of our body, limbs and senses. Then we are in the dream state. When we are dreaming, at that time we are not aware of our physical body. And, but we, have, we are aware of our mind because the dream is happening in the mind. And then you go into the deep sleep state when we are not aware of our mind. There are no dreams even, but still the consciousness is there. So, but that's not Atma related. I mean, that's the, the dream, the different states are for the conditioned body. Right. So, Atma has its consciousness, but that consciousness can expand and contract. Correct. Correct. So, so think of the Atma as, as something eternal, beginningless, endless, will not change, will not be conditioned. Right. There are other things which we'll talk about later that comprise the rest of who I am. These other things are changeable. They are conditioned. These other things, sleep, dream, all of that, but Atma doesn't. Right. So, to understand Atma itself, one has to understand it as it is, which is a pure, pure existence. Right. Consciousness, which is Chetana. Right. So, sometimes we use these three words, Sat, Chita and Ananda, which Sat means that it has existence which can never be taken away from it, means it will never die, it will never be transformed, there is no Vikara, it cannot become something else, it does not grow in size, it does not diminish in size, it does not become old. So, all these kinds of transformations do not happen in Atma. And it is conscious, which means that it can acquire knowledge. And ananda means that it is free from suffering. There is no suffering in the atma. That's why when a person goes into the deep sleep state, even if the person is suffering when he is awake because of some ailment, some disease, some pain in the body, in the deep sleep, you don't have that pain because the atma doesn't have any pain. No pain or material pleasure even can touch atma. atma so, whatever my, I'm thinking, whatever I'm feeling, pleasure, pain, etc., etc., is not atma. It's all in the mind. It's all in the conditioned. We are so far just introducing one thing at a time. We don't want to get ahead and talk about all the other vocabulary which we will come to. So right now all we are saying is there is Atma and then there is this conditioned complex. Right. Which we will discuss what it is details later. But the conditioned complex uh, is what we feel I am. I feel I am that rather than uh, feeling that I am Atma. Right. And that's the whole problem of the human being, that we are not properly self-identifying as the Atma, we are identifying with this other complex. The acquired the ac system. So, what has been acquired, what is conditioned, we are falsely identifying that as the self rather than the Atma. So, we want to just differentiate these two things, Atma and conditioned si side of the self, yeah. conditioned side of the being. And then we will go layer by layer and describe what the conditionings are and yes, what those different. I, I can give an example to make it more clear. Sure. Just like you have a car. So, car has tires, it has steering, it has engine, it has fuel injection system, you have a gas tank. But all this whole thing works because of the battery. The current is supplied by that. And when you connect this whole system to the battery, then the current flows into everything. You know, you, you have your dashboard that lights up as soon as you turn on your key and then it starts working. But if you remove the battery, the whole system may be very good. It may be Mercedes or whatever, you know, company, nice car. But without battery, it won't move an inch. It may have a lot of gas in it. So, like that, Atma is that which is supplying the electricity. That is the consciousness, the Chetana. The Chetana. Yeah. So, Atma's, it's not that Atma needs to get Chetana from somewhere. It's built-in character, it's built-in tattva, its property has chetana. 
Right. And it is just Chetana that flows into all the other parts of the being to, to give them life and to give them whatever qualities and properties they have. Right. So, of course, in case of the battery, it gets exhausted after some time. In case of Atma, the consciousness does not get... There is inexhaustible Chetana. Right. It is the a, chetana it's like a eternal battery. It's an infinite think. supply of Chetana. Yes. So, Atma is itself immortal and its uh, Chetana is never depleted. Right. It is never depleted. This is, so, this is the most important thing to understand. So, Atma is beginningless, endless, built-in infinite amount of consciousness in it and the reason we don't feel ourselves that way is because we have identified with something which is the conditioned part of ourselves right. which is not the atma itself yeah so that is the misconception we are carrying we are in a sort of delusion right it's like somebody takes a heavy drug and starts thinking himself that he's a peacock right right or he's a dog or something like right. that but right. he has not become a peacock so, in the same way, Atma is Atma always and no harm can actually happen to me. Nobody can do any harm to me in any way. All the harms they can do is only to my body. But because I identify with my body, with my mind, with my senses, then I start thinking it's happening to me. So, that's the delusion. So, tell us about the two kinds of Atma, the ones that are never conditioned and the ones that are conditioned. So, Atma and then there is Paramatma. Okay. So, the Paramatma is what we call as Supreme Person and uh, He is the in charge of the whole cosmos and all the Atmas belong to that Paramatma. So, Paramatma never falls under this illusion or this kind of identification. Paramatma is always situated in its glory. But the Atmas here in this material world, they are conditioned. There are also Atmas in the spiritual world, they are also not conditioned. They also understand themselves as they are. But Atmas which are part of this material cosmos, they are the ones which are in the conditioned state and which are misidentifying themselves. They are ignorant, they are thinking, I am a male, I am a female. Atma is neither a male nor a female. Since there is Paramatma and there are Atmas, uh, is the population of Atmas finite, infinite? How many are there and uh, since new people are coming, uh, where are they before they people are born? Where are the Atmas? <laughs> yes, this is a very common question and very interesting question. So, Atmas are Ananta. They are infinite. Okay. So, and you know that in mathematics we say that from infinity minus infinity is infinity. So, if we understand two things that there are infinite number of Atmas and Atmas can go from one body to another body. It's not that human beings are going to take birth only as human beings. No, human being can become ant and ant can become a human being. So now we know that there are many species of life which have disappeared. In fact, according to you know, data, they say that every hour so many species are getting you know, extinct. But even with all the species combined, it would be finite population in the planet Earth. Inf right. They are infinite. No, but uh, we, we, the number of... Uh, particles, the number of cells is finite. I mean, there would be... So, is it is it that all the Atmas are in the earth or also there are Atmas that are not in this earth? They're either no, no, somewhere at, else? Atmas are throughout. In throughout the? This cosmos, this universe. So... Even on the moon, even in the sun inside, sun planet, there are Atmas. They have fiery bodies. There are Atmas in the sun also? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, we, we science does, is still trying to search if there is a life on the other planets. But according to our scripture, there is life everywhere. All these stars and all these planets which you see in the sky, they are not created for nothing. There is life there. And according to law of karma, you are born in different, different places. But you have different types of bodies. Which okay, are... that's my point. So, there are some Atmas which people like us would not recognize. You won't be able to even perceive them. We won't be able to perceive them. Right. So, the infinite population of Atmas is not just limited to living beings as we see living beings. That's our perception. That's our perception, but they, that's limited by our perception. Right. So, there are Atmas that have the concept of body as we know it doesn't even apply. Maybe right. they have something with, uh, in what form they are or we can't even cognize that. Yeah, just like, I mean, there's 
microbes and amoebas, we cannot see them with our naked eyes. No, but so, even that's within the world of science. science right. Science can so, see them through microscopes. So now they can see, but previously they could they not. They could not. But we are saying even now, there may be yeah. atmas in the sun. Uh, which, Beyond, yeah. Which, which we, we can't imagine such a thing could exist even right. because it will burn. Because that's what Gita says, that fire, atma cannot be burnt, it cannot be wet, it can be withered by wind. You can't do anything. So, if it, there's an Atma living in the sun, it's not going to be affected no matter how many no. trillion degrees centigrade it is. No, it is not. So, doesn't need is, an, so doesn't therefore, need an it, is important, it is important to really understand the profound concept of Atma. Yes. By itself, before we sort of get into other things. This is a very, very profound concept that you should meditate on. And this has nothing to do with soul. Soul does not have all these kind no, of No, no, soul qualities. does not. Soul is a mistranslation of this word. Yes. Atma, it's actually misleading. So, in material world, we see things are always changing by the influence of time. This does not apply on Atma. Right. Time has no effect on it. So, time has no effect on Atma. Right. Uh, you know, so it's the same Atma always. Always. And the conditioned existence is a separate thing from Atma. Don't want to bring it into this Atma episode. Deserves to be discussed systematically one slice at a time because that also is broken into many other things. Right. That is broken into chitta and prana and ahankar, manas, buddhi, all of those we will come to one by one. And they are a whole complex of conditioning and we are sort of misidentifying with that. Right. That's the so we just want to differentiate between the Atma, which is the true self, and all of these other things. Atma and the rest. And the rest. Good.